Another year draws to a close. Another end of year tour kicks off. It's the 2016 edition. And we start things off in the United States of America where they are hosting the Maori All Blacks for our first end of year tour matchup. Hello everyone and welcome along to Cornflakes Crib, your home of Rugby Challenge 3. And then the year tour series where we follow all the big matches going on around world rugby for these tours. We're going all over the world, starting in America, of course. We make our way over to England. We've got Ireland involved as well. Wales, of course, is Australia, South Africa. All the big guns, all the big names. But we start off here this matchup that many people may not have even known had taken place. This is a huge match here for the United States of America, and they're putting out a fairly handy side as well. A few new names this team that I personally haven't seen take the field for the United States. A lot of players from their seven circuit team coming into the 15 side as well. But they have a very strong forward pack, the uh, usual front row starting off, and it's going to be the middle with Hildebrand, the key man in the, that forward pack. Uh, outside him, they've of course got Tom Clever, he is massive. Tony Lamborn, the former New Zealand player, will start on the open side. Danny Barrett at number eight in the back line. There's plenty of excitement machines outside the halves combination, which is Oxbrager and Holder. There are plenty of names that look very, very dangerous. Niall at inside centre, Leuta on the left wing, and of course, Ail Sifo on the right wing. They are dangerous, dangerous players with plenty of Sevens experience. Given the chance and open play, they could become a huge danger for the USA. The Māori All Blacks, a team that you don't see too often in the world of rugby in these big international games like this, but they have really come to the party with an extraordinary good-looking side as well. Boosted by the addition of a few All Blacks as well, the likes of Elliot Dixon, Tuero Carbalo, and Damian McKenzie starting in this match on the blind side, scrum half and fullback respectively. But it's the rest of the players, the originals from this Māori All Black side, that really have the potential to cause havoc. The likes of the Ioanni brothers, Akira and Rico, they are massive dangers. Ihai West, a good chance from with some quality inside and outside of his position at fly half. And of course, James Lowe, the man we've talked about many, many times on this channel, deserving of a better black jersey, but he'll take the Māori All Blacks jersey for now. A great looking side, a very strong side, a very good front row as well. Hang sticks in a May. This should be a good matchup, but I expect the Māori All Blacks to get a good job done. They will be the ones to kick off. Ehi West with the ball on halfway. Starting number 10 for this matchup. It is, of course, the Māori All Blacks in the black uniform. The United States of America in the white with the blue shoulders. We are set for kickoff. Ehi West turns from the ref and he puts this on his boot. We're underway. The end of year tour has commenced. And it's quickly taken for Rani as well. The shifting is brilliant already for Māori All Blacks. They could start this in emphatic fashion. West to low and James Lowe will start this game with an absolute flying touch. That was brilliant. Nothing really to play structure to from the kickoff. But a magnificent display of keeping the ball alive. And in for the try goes James Lowe on the left wing after it all started on the right. And Kiriulani right in the middle, the number eight, doing a fantastic job to keep that ball alive. But it all started from his brother Rico Yulani, who took the kickoff in. This man had a couple of touches. His hair looks like it's on fire. Now he used this breeze to good effect to kick off. How will he manage it to convert the try? And steps west. Looks all right. Oh, that is perfectly executed. Just like the try. Ehi West adds the extras at 7-0. The Maori All Blacks over USA. Not the start that the home team would have had in mind by any stretch of the imagination. Holder is back to halfway. 
And he's kicking off after the try. Ash Dixon, the captain, misses that. Carter Pryor goes in and sweeps up the loose ball on the ground. Here's Corbalo. Dangerous player. Gets it away to Pronta. He's elusive and dangerous. He's got Rico Iwani. Slips it back into Akira. And Akira Iwani just about does it alone. Numbers coming for USA, but it's there for the Montreal Blacks again. West, there's a big ball to Ben May. The big man charges. Elliot Dixon on hand. And that is a finish that any forward would be proud of. Well, the big trundler, Ben May, making big inroads into this USA defence. Kerbalo to West, bang. Hits the big tight end prop, and he's being chased by the big American second row, Brakely. And he almost did enough to catch up with May. But Brakely didn't have the speed. We see it there. The big chase of the century was ruined by a deal at the back for the United States. Elliot Dixon in support, as we know he does so well. For the Highlanders, for the All Blacks as well. Coming into the side from the All Blacks squad, both teams touring in Chicago together. EI West delivered the pass that led to the line break, and he delivers a conversion that leads to a 14 0 lead. What a start at the moment by the Māori All Blacks. They lead USA 14 0. Not even 12 on the clock either. We have. A one-sided start to this matchup. Back to the USA holder who kicks off and hangs. Rear touch, Frank Winter skiing. This is a nice little interlude by the nice. Maori button to touch. Goes James Lowe. One-on-one, -on -one. good tackle by his opposite number. ILC folk did well to pull him down. USA get a line out, Hilton Brand, the man we talked about at the start, has to hold this American pack together. He's not done that at all. It's given away and Franklin steals it. Bateman, short ball to a carry Iwani. He slips through, finds the highways. One of the speed, Rico Iwani back in. And Kira's on hand again. The Iwani brothers looking devastating with turnover. And away come USA. What a run here by Bowman. Police. Storms away from Haynes, does brilliant well. Still attacking America, they come wide, they've found some room as well. Lamborn, beautiful pass, gets the support play as well from Clever. That was almost a great break. RC Fault does uh, fantastically. Holder nice. plays a little first receiver for a change. Hilter Brand. Can't get through. Stolen from Carbaro like a sitting duck. Here is the high west. He comes through the first line. Take it from Tio. Intercepted though. Great defense at the back from the American fullback. Hilton Brand goes wide. And again, Lamborn finding room. But he is given the hospital pass away. It's being knocked on from Hilton Brand as well. Damien McKenzie. Well, he's lost the ball. Hilton Brand, the man of the mistake. Knock on. McKenzie trying to inject Crouch. himself into the game. Find. Well, he has not succeeded Sit. there at all. Hardly touched the ball so far. Man of that explosive attacking ability. The Maldi would love to get him involved. First score of the game. All oh, the Americans get a good shove on. The United States steal the ball. And now's a great chance. They go wide very quickly. The kick over the top from Campbell. Dreadful option. And here's Rico Iwani. Look out. He's busting away. Steps around Teo. Has the speed. Goes away. Over the 22. And in for the try. What a reply to a dreadful, nothing, aimless kick from Campbell. And Rico Iwani makes him pay the ultimate prize. Another try under the sticks as well. Well, it wasn't Tio he left behind. It was Leuta who was absolutely smoked. And then too much speed for Tio who come across. There's the step. There's no chance at all for the opposite winger. He was deep as well. That's how much they 
who are trying to defend that counterattack by the Māori All Blacks. It still wasn't enough. Leota couldn't stop anything at all. And Tio, too much ground to cover. Here is Ihai West again, right out in front. Easiest kick of the day for him so far. Half an hour gone. The Māori All Blacks well and truly in control of this one. It's 21-0. Well, the USA got a, a brief foray into attacking territory of the Māori All Blacks side, but it was short-lived and quickly squashed as Elliot Dixon still off close to Franklin. There's Bateman! Bateman goes through. Now he looks wide. Big pass. Didn't find anyone. Lowe eventually picks it up, but a foot in touch as he flicks it back inside to Tawera Kabalo. Well, assistant referee says he was out at the time of the pass. So Hiltabran has a chance for his American side. He nails the line out this time. Pulled in nicely by Simita. Dragged around here. Oh, the Māori All Blacks trying to draw them into touch. Again, Campbell goes for the kick. Nothing really on. And is this really the man you want to give a counter-taking chance to? It is Danny McKenzie who finds Skeen. The later Bateman. Bateman once again carves up the pass. Miss everyone. Goes to Rico Iwani. Who nearly repays again with a big length of the field try. Carbato waits. It's slow ball. Finds Bateman who's been carving up nicely. Oh, gloves well. Franklin finds it to Dixon. Dixon's looking and waiting for West. Gets the point to instead. Now he hire West. And he'll finish this one off. Sweetly as you like. Around under the sticks he goes. Another try for the Māori All Blacks. This is devastatingly one-sided for the visiting side. And you can see each player is slowly and surely getting more and more comfortable in this match for the team in black. We've seen some great improvements as this game's worn on, especially for the likes of Bateman and Proctor, the two centres for the Māori All Blacks, really stepping up their game, not to mention the Ohio West, who has just come on brilliantly in today's matchup. But as we spoke about at the start, the Ioani brothers, Dixon, you know, the players who play for the All Blacks, Kerbalo and McKenzie for a touch as well. Here is West, and he oh, slots that one beautifully as well. No mistakes from Ihaia West, 28-0. It is an absolute dominant first half for Māori All Blacks. They lead the USA. The crowd do not care. They're here for some entertainment, and boy, oh boy, they are getting it as well. Can you believe those stats? 94% position. Two, six. Just six for the USA. They've still made a line break, though. Fair play to them. But territory is a much better 72, 28. Tackle count, 29. USA, 12. The Māori All Blacks as well. Handling errors, big. Six from uh, the Māori side and just one from the United States. Line breaks, again, one-sided. One from the sixth position of the USA. Seven from the Māori All Blacks. They are dominating this game from head to toe. Can they keep it up in the second half? Stay tuned to find out. Both sides back out on the field, ready to go. 28-0, second 40 about to kick off. The results as such, almost a foregone conclusion. But can the home team find something to celebrate? Kane Haynes with a brief run. He finds Elliot Dixon. It may get worse. Chainsaw from a standing start will still be far too quick. And now he's going to scoot around under the sticks. His second try of the match. Well, any corner of hope the USA had of a good start to the second 40. Once again, destroyed. In the blink of an eye, James Lowe goes over right from the kickoff. 
There's just been very little fight back from the USA. The lane chase from Scrum Hub, Axberger as well, was never going to be enough against James Lowe. You see him there. He's the only one giving 110 there in that chase. And he almost forces Lowe to go early into the try line. But James Lowe is an absolute speedster. He flies. And he scores tries. And this man loves to add some kickers as well. So the halves have changed, but the story has not. EI West nails the conversion. And things just get worse for the USA. It's 35 0, and we've just kicked off the second half. Well, the USA must be wondering where the ball comes from, let alone where any points come from. This time, Holder goes short, and Dixon goes to Ioani, who does very well. So isolated, they'll lose the ball. Nicely done from Lambourne as well. Now there's a run Race. from the big forwards in the middle of the park. Another one keeping it tight. Eventually, Race. Barrett takes it to ground. Danny Barrett doing well. Tucked around the corner there. Nice ball as well. Finding room out on the left here. Lanza goes to ground. Race. Good tackle coming in from Rico Iwani. Barrett slips it up. Oh, he saved himself just about from going in touch there. No, it. A man we thought may feature prominently in this match really has failed to do so. There's a line out to the Māori All Blacks. They go for a full seven-man jumper. Oh, it's stolen at the front. Very well done from Brakeley as well, but Hiltabran can't hang on to the ball and gets dragged into touch. Nice little play from the USA. But if anything has given the Māori All Blacks a get-out-of-jail-free card here to take another line out in a similar spot. This time they nail it to Skeen. Carvalho! He's gone to West and he knocks it on. Well, mistake City developing here for both sides. But you've got to say, Ehi West has been fairly Fine. flawless in this matchup. 54 minutes gone. Hexbreaker will feed for you, we say. This scrum has probably been your best part, but the Money All Blacks have to have a say in that. That charge over on second. But America come back on the fourth. This is tight. And it comes back to Axberger as well. He flicks it out to hold it. Dummies goes back inside. And a nice run finds Clever. They're keeping it alive nicely here. Barrett, they've got numbers out wide. Oh, they step and feel Campbell should have gone the pass. Big mistake there. Still keeping it alive now. And it's a contact goes Savelta. See if a landlord spots a little hole, but taken down. And Carballo steals the ball. James so has got it. Now he's going to go for field. Puts on a thumper. It holds up with the breeze. Where's it coming down? Not for low. And it's Barrett who pulls it in. He's, well, someone's in touch there. Lowe's pulled the ball off him with a foot, obviously, over the sideline. It's pretty hard to get in good body position that close to the touch line without going over the line. And it gives Hilton Grand and his USA team another line out. They go to the middle and they're quickly throwing it out. Barrett to Lambourne and into the centre field they go. And straight Grace. into contact. Good run there from Mayoa. Recycle quickly. Brakely. Oh, Brakely. Sauce to Hames. Look at that. Quickly out to Pronta. Pronta running out of room. And Kiriwani. Oh, the pass was off the mark. You expect so much from a Kiriwani that you just have surprise when something like that does not come off. Delta Brand again. Take it in the front this time. Brankley takes it in. And this time they decide to maul it forward. Now they go to the backs. Now it goes to Campbell. Release. There's no way through that centre defence. Holder just gets his kick away. And he's relieved a bit of pressure here on the American line. Gets them out of their 22, up towards halfway. They've seen a bit of ball here in the second half, the Americans. They'll be pleased with that, but 35 to nil with just 10 to go. Isn't the scoreline they're wanting? West. 
Akira Iwani will show some footwork, slips over in the tackle, gets up, the acceleration, skiing, oh there's numbers everywhere, it's going to be Proctor, he's over for the Mardi Gras Blacks, 72 gone, and it is Proctor the try scorer, well they've done everything right, they absorbed a little bit of pressure from the Americans, but how about that, Akira Iwani gets up and burns on Flambon, who to its credit stays in the fight and is the closest defender throughout. But it's just too much attacking progress by this Mardi All Black side. Too much speed, too much power, and more importantly, too much of both of them combined in players like Akira Yulani that just block busting their way through and then show speed to finish as well. It's been an entertaining matchup, plenty of tries. The home fans didn't get to see the American performance that many would have liked. But if they are neutral coming to this venue, a bit of a rugby weekend it is. I got to see plenty of action. Here is West. Is it going to have the legs? It does. A bit testy there. Breeze in his face of that shot and almost held up in the wind forever. But accurate goal kicking from West as the Māori All Blacks up 42-0. One way of try scoring the freaks at the moment. Dixon, massive pass away to Ash Dixon. Oh, high tackle. Well, this is oh, this is going to make things even worse here for the Americans. Bowman's going to go yellow card, high tackle on Ash Dixon. The captain has milked a yellow card almost. Here is West, they're gonna tap it. Unbelievable, from their own 22. Rico Iwani, he comes up, straight through the center of the park. Franklin the ski, back to Proctor. Proctor going again. And Proctor injured. Well, that is not good at all for the Māori All Blacks. Replacement quickly ready and on is Sean Wainui coming on to replace him at outside center, a shame. To lose Proctor, but Wainui is an adequate replacement. Crouch. It's been around this Mardi Black side for quite some time as well. Set. Scrum feet. <laughs> to the side with the injury. That is the Mardi All Blacks. Oh, a massive one as well. Here's Akira Yuani. Why not? Rico Yuani gets the pass straight from him. Rico Yuani cuts inside to you and leaves him for absolute rubber and dust. And an exquisite finish. From the Ioani brothers, that is schoolyard stuff. Practice a million times in their backyard. Akira off the back of the scrum, goes wide, draws defenders, finds Rico. Rico steps inside the fullback and puts the finish like whipped cream on top of the nicest cake. That is how they do it. That is how dangerous this money all black side is. Many people consider them the feeder to the All Blacks, and why not? When you've got skill like this getting international exposure, it is only good for the game in New Zealand. Ehi West, keeping out Oteri Black for this game. Good start from West as well. He's been flawless with boots, and his running with ball in hand has not been bad either. Over goes another conversion, and the Māori All Blacks have just dominated this one from go to woe, from start to finish, all the way for the 18 minutes. One team was only ever in this result. The USA got a bit of a fight back in the central part of the second half. They had a bit of ball, they had a bit of running with it, but in the end, the defence of the Māori All Blacks far too good. And overall, one team far better than the other. USA have a lot to work on following that result. A lot to progress with. Uh, no points whatsoever. That is the biggest shame for the USA team. They did have a, a little flirting forays into the opposition half, but never with much conviction. And they never really got their game going whatsoever. The Māori All Blacks disrupted everything that they put together. No points whatsoever for USA, but seven converted tries for the Māori All Blacks. Elliot Dixon, Ihaia West with one, as did Matt Proctor with one as well. 
James Lowe and Rico Ioani with two each. That is domination and devastation in the back line. EOS now seven out of seven conversions as well for the Māori All Blacks. Well, we did see twice as much ball in the second half that we've seen from the USA in the first half. They got up to 15%, which compared to the seven there in the first half, will be much welcomed addition to their ball carrying time. Territory 64-36. It was never a game that USA had big camp chances down in the Māori half at all. The penalties, the yellow cards, ultimately game over by that time. The tackle count even evened up a bit from where it was at halftime, which just shows that the USA did have some time with ball in hand, and it wasn't just 80 minutes of tackling practice, although they do need a bit more of that as well. 13 line breaks to just two. That shows you the one side with massive domination. It was a good battle in the four pack. I thought USA held their own for most of those scrums, even turning one over at times. So that's really where they'll take a positive from. Other than that, it was all the Māori All Blacks in this opening end of year tour matchup. We will be following all the big games, so stay tuned and stick around for those, of course, coming your way. South Africa against the Barbarians, of course, was one big fixture. And the Irish up against the All Blacks and the Wallabies in action as well against the Welsh. So plenty of rugby from the end of year tour opening weekend. I hope to see you all there for the rest of the games. But until we meet again, thanks for watching and take care.